My name is Andrea Ferrato, and I am a certified dementia practitioner, and I'm here with Natalie Hansen, who is also a certified dementia practitioner. And Natalie and I thought it would be very important for us to discuss the different stages associated with Alzheimer's disease and dementia because there is so much happening within each stage. Um, and then we get to the final stage. This is the end stage. The final stage is stage seven. And um, the brain is definitely losing its ability to guide and direct my body movements. So um, my control systems for movement, um, for interaction, for response, for processing, it's failing. I basically have the abilities of an infant. Um, I lose the ability to smile, hold my head up. Um, my trunk strength is very limited, so I tend to, to lean heavily to one side. Basically, I become total care. Um, everything is just kind of shutting down. And, and often they, they will fetal in that fetal position, just like an infant, um, because with those limited body movements, if we're not moving their body for them and doing that range of motion, there is that large risk of contractures um, and, and that their muscles are just not going to want to move anymore. Um, and so they end up in that fetal position. So their muscles tend to be active and turned on, um, turned off most of the time. Um, they startle very easily. And they'll, they'll freeze and they'll tighten up when they startle. Um, and if, if you're trying to be too quick with them, um, loud sounds, loud sounds, loud sounds will make them jump and startle. You know, they sleep a lot and their eyes are closed a lot during this time. So a lot of what they're relying on at this stage is that auditory, they're hearing, they're, they're listening and those loud, heavy, those loud, sudden noises can be very scary, um, feeding. You know, we talked earlier about how the lips, teeth, and tongue and all uh, that are, are highly sensitive areas when we get to that stage five. Now we're in a seven. My eyes are closed all the time. And all of a sudden, this spoon just hits my mouth because you're trying to feed me and help me eat. And I startle and, I, and I'm not sure what's going on. I think that if it's simple as putting your hand and having that physical contact and letting them know somebody is there with yeah. them, you know, talk to them, not around them. Um, because they're not an object in the room. They're, they're a human being and they're still trying to process. They really are trying so hard to process. It's just, it's, it's so much harder at this stage. Um, they, they definitely spend much of their time resting. They are not aware of much that's going around in the world around them. Um, they struggle to understand what you say. Um, if you use words and you get too loud, they just might shut down and retreat within themselves. I mean, in this stage, they're kind of in their own quiet, beautiful world, right? It's, yeah. Um, they respond best to familiar voices and rhythms. Of course, that touch, that gradual and gentle movements will be very helpful. It's going to take them a while to open up. They may shut down in an instant. Um, and just fade away for a little while where they, they're just sleeping. Basically, they're just really resting. Uh, I think that their balance gets very poor if they haven't stopped walking at this point. Um, balance and gait get very unsteady. A lot of, lot of falls can happen. They may not be aware that they're leaning or sitting in a certain position for a long period of time because they don't have that awareness of their body anymore. And I think that went all the way, that went back to this last stage and maybe even a little bit in the stage before that. And so you can only imagine it's got to be much worse when we actually hit this um, infant stage. Um, so again, just letting them know where you are. Yeah. You know, um, with, with simple physical touch. And, and just your voice is going to go a long way. Um, helping them eat is going to be a very slow process. Um, it is going to be difficult when they don't want to eat anymore. And yet you recognize, um, you know, that they're not taking that food and drinking as much. And you're just terrified that they're going to become dehydrated and malnourished. Um, it's very very normal for them to not be interested in food and drink anymore at this stage. And maybe not in the very beginnings of the stage, but towards the end of the stage, um, this end stage, food and drink is just not going to be appealing anymore. Right. They're just going to eat less and less. They're going to drink less and less. 
they're going to start to have trouble coordinating, swallowing, and breathing. And so that's when it gets to where you're giving them very small bites because there's that risk of aspiration because they can't they can't coordinate the two. And so their food can go right, you know, as we call down the wrong pipe, um, which is that aspiration. Um, so you can't push it. You can't try. I know that it's, it's sad because, you know, you feel like they're malnutrition. You feel like they're not getting what they need. And so you try, but trying to push them to eat when they don't want to or won't can only increase that risk of choking or aspiration. Um, so, and, and, you know, just because they're not coughing doesn't mean they're not having swallowing problems. So at this stage, you know, the brain's not going to recognize the problem anymore. It can't. And so it doesn't react and say cough right? because you're choking or cough because, you know, it went down the wrong pipe. So sometimes it just goes down the wrong pipe and we're not even aware. Um, so un unfortunately, they can develop pneumonia from that, aspiration pneumonia, and their body's shutting down. So they're not able to fight the infection like they, they used to be able to. Um, and, it's, and it's normal for them to have muscle wasting. It's normal for them to have weight loss. They may develop wounds that don't heal because they don't have enough protein to process. You know, they don't, they're, they're, they don't have that to heal those wounds. Um, so they're, they can become very prone to infections. Um, the brain's not, the brain's not recognizing and it's not organizing a response to those infections. So they will not get better. Um, it is a terminal condition. We are in a stage seven and it is terminal. They, um, the things that, that you will start to see are just the symptoms of the end of the disease. It is, it is progressive. It is neurological. There is no cure and there are no survivors. And it's very unfortunate. Um, so they will eat less and less and they will drink less and less. But the, the good news is on with that, if there is good news is that their brain is able to release endorphins during this stage. So they, it, it allows them to not be in distress or not be in pain. And I'm not sure how comforting that is, but for me, knowing that, you know, they're not starving, right? They're not feeling this in, in, in incredible thirst and hunger pains. They're, they're, they're not in distress. And, and I feel that that's a little bit comforting to know that my body and my brain just automatically do that for me, right. you know, protect me, which is a great thing. Um, so they're not going to be hungry or thirsty at that stage. So how do we help during this stage? Um, I think just taking that time to observe and check out how and where they are before approaching, um, determine how alert they are. How aware are they? That's going to go a long way in your approach. Um, sometimes that soothing hand on the arm um, kind of wakes them up a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't. If they are away, use that friendly voice to try to kind of bring them back if you can. If they are present, use those moments to interact and connect because they are so few and far between. Um, use sight, sound, touch, smell, use all your senses is, and theirs as much as possible. Um, but go slow. Give them time to take the information in to process it. Um, use the time that you're together to be together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're, we're caring for them, of course, but it's not just always about the care, you know, that emotional support and just letting them know that you're there, I think Talk is, is them. super, super helpful. Um, com consider the body experiences to allow them to have time that they can enjoying cuddling close, um, stroking, a, stroking a pet. If you have a dog or a cat, you know, that feeling of, of, of sensory of, of petting an animal. I mean, we don't have therapy animals for nothing in this world. You know, they are calming. They, they help, they feel, make you feel good. Yeah. Right. Um, take me outside. Take me outside. Don't leave me laying in the bed all the time. Get me up, get me moving. Take me in my chair, my wheelchair, whatever it takes. Let me feel the sun on my face and the breeze in my hair. Those are all sensory. It's got to feel good. doesn't matter what stage you're in. Right? right. I mean, I feel that way. Um, so I think that 
you know, those can be some very, very helpful tips, um, especially in that stage seven, because it is probably one of the hardest stages. Um, you want to offer them little sips. You can offer them little tastes. But again, don't be so concerned with the amount that they're eating or taking in because um, it or what they're taking in. At this point, it should be about what they like and not what so much about what is good for them right? They don't need a full course meal. They don't need their vegetable starch and protein. If they'll drink a milkshake, um, or any, anything, take a sip of, take a, take a sip of water, or if their favorite drink was coffee, whatever it may be, just give it to them. Because right now it's all about what they like. It really isn't about what's going to give them the best nutritional value. Um, and I think talking with them is important. Um, talk to them and with them. Not right. Make Not them about a, them. You know, uh, right. if somebody comes in the room and, 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 you know, asks how they're doing or whatever, include them in that conversation. Right. Even so if it doesn't, um, it do, even if it doesn't appear like they're responding. Right. They're still in there. Right. They're still listening. The hearing is the last thing that goes. Yeah. You know, so I feel like, like you said, include them. Even if they can't respond and be, you know, and, and participate in said conversation, let them know that they're a part of this. That they, yeah, they still matter in these conversations and that, you know. Yeah. Um, so to end at this stage, I think that if you're ready, you actually may be able to offer them the greatest gift of all by letting them know it's all right to go. It's hard. Nobody says it's going to be easy, um, but we know that this is the end stage. We know that there's no cure, that they're not going to just, you know, miraculously get better. So if you can give them that gift of allowing them to the knowledge that it's okay to go, um, often they may not be able to leave you. They may not be able to leave you so easily without your permission. After all, they do still care inside that shell. They do. And in, in moments that they can, that they can process and maybe even respond, it's okay to let them know. I mean, I've had, I've had them, I've had clients in stage seven in the actively dying process that wouldn't let go until that family member walked in the door and they flew all the way from across the United States yeah. to get there. But they waited that two days until that person walked in the room and said, hi, mom. And then they left the world. They were waiting for permission. They were waiting for that moment. So it's okay. It's okay to, to let go. It's okay to tell them that it's okay to go. Um, and that, that pretty much wraps up all of our stages. And I really hope that this information is helpful if you are going through this at home, if you are having, uh, if your loved one lives in a facility and you go to visit them, there are tips um, that we discussed that might go a long way in helping you have really good, meaningful visits and conversations. Thank you.